Excelsior Springs showing the moment an accused kidnapper was arrested. Timothy Hazlitt Jr. is facing rape, kidnapping, and assault charges in Clay County, accused of locking up a woman for weeks. Newly released court documents say the victim, a 22-year-old woman, escaped while Hazlitt brought his child to school Friday. She ran for help, wearing only a trash bag with a metal collar and duct tape around her neck. Those documents say she was handcuffed, whipped, beaten, and raped while locked in a small room in his basement for weeks. Hazlitt had his first day in court today in Liberty. Our cameras weren't allowed inside, but a judge entered a not guilty plea on his behalf, adding that Hazlitt would get a public defender. And tonight we have exclusive video of that arrest. KMBC Nice Jackson Kurtz is live in Excelsior Springs. And Jackson, you talked to the man who made the 911 call leading to that arrest. We did, and he filmed that video just inside his home, just a couple doors down from when that arrest happened. You can still see outside the home. They still have that police line tape up and cage outside of the entire home. Just one look, and... It gives me the chills. I just can't imagine what went inside of that house. Everardo Miranda, who lives a couple doors down from Timothy Halslet, filmed the moments Hazlitt was taken into custody. I could have never imagined that happened here in Excelsior Springs. In the exclusive video to Channel 9, Miranda thought Hazlitt was being arrested after calling police because of complaints about the dog. Oh man, you know, I felt bad because they took him to jail for the dog, you know, and uh, I go to sleep and I wake up to find out this crazy thing happened just right next door to us. Miranda says he rarely saw Hazlitt only to let the dog in and outside and never saw the woman who ran for help. What that woman went through, you know, my heart breaks for her. Hopefully he rots in jail. He should not see sunlight ever again. Hopefully things get better around here and I'm trusting the police officers around here to, you know, keep us secure. Still lots of neighbors and folks just driving by, still with lots of questions of what happened inside this home. 11 Excelsior Springs, Jackson Kurtz, KMBC 9 News. Jackson, thanks. Hazlitt is due back in court one week from today. I wonder, you know, what, is your, what has your communication been with police uh, since then? None. Zero zilch. They are backtracking as much as they can now. Uh, I have a few friends at the police department that are reaching out, telling me, good job, don't give up, you need to keep, you need to, I have a couple of friends that told me to make the comparison in certain areas and to look at certain things, uh, prospect being the key point. The young lady was snatched off of prospect. We were talking about people that were snatched off of prospect at the same time point that this young lady was taken off of prospect was the same time point we were looking for those young ladies and she being one of them on prospect that was taken from that area so that was the easiest comparison uh, that they told me to just keep following up on no matter what anybody says follow up in that area they can't dispute that no matter what uh, they tried to, so far, saying that there was never no missing women. Uh, there was all a hoax. No one died. No one's missing. No one's being taken off a of prospect. But again, that's the same thing that happened with uh, Terry Blair. The exact same thing that happened with Terry Blair. And we ended up working that case uh, by accident. We was doing a neighborhood cleanup and ran across the first body. Uh, doing a neighborhood cleanup. Uh, and it just kept going, kept going, kept going as we were doing more cleanups within the community. I found out there was more young ladies there and more missing. Uh, but again, they kept saying these are isolated incidents as this is going on, but we knew even in Blair's case that it's not isolated. Uh, uh, Berdella mm -hmm. here in Kansas City. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> How he got away with it too. Right. Uh, they kept saying isolated incidents. Here's a man selling body parts in a store right. in Westport. Yes. Uh, but it just in front of you, even. But you're pointing it out, and they're telling you no. Yeah. It becomes a troublesome thing, you know, when you 
I, I guess you know when you when you when you're the black sheep of the town because you do have a big mouth and you won't shut up because things need to be brought to light things need to be exposed things need those hard conversations need to happen I'm fearful for my grandkids that's why I do what I do is for my grandkids for the next generation coming up because if I'm gonna live here in Kansas City there's gonna come a day that I can't walk I'm old and I'm tired and I need somebody to look out for me and if I don't give them the tools too then I'm really hurting myself. It's an interesting way to look at it. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, okay, so. So he said something that interesting. He said snatched. Yes. Yes. Can, can you describe that for me? We have the tendency in the community, law enforcement, the community looking at a difference between and I'm not saying this by a long shot but we look at young ladies that work the streets at night mm -hmm. getting in the cars they usually say well that's on them they knew what they were getting into but these are some young ladies that have been taken literally that do not work that industry that are just out partying having a good time and are snatched off the streets by these individuals. It doesn't matter if they are working in an industry or not. This is not something that they agreed upon. This is not something that somebody wants. They still need to be treated with dignity and respect. They are human. They have rights. No is no. It doesn't matter. I said this and I will say this until I have every breath out of my body. I don't care if you're married to someone and the wife says no, she has the right to say no. So if somebody is boyfriend, girlfriend, and they're using that a lot too now, as well as domestic, uh, they agreed upon this. Uh, no. No one ever agrees to be locked in a basement, a metal dog collar and I'm picturing this in my mind because I think about the slave collars around this young lady's neck with a padlock that no one's looking for because they're saying it's not happening. If she would have never got away, we wouldn't be here today. They would have just they said, no, it doesn't exist. She doesn't exist. Knowing that she was snatched, taken off a of prospect, taken to Exception Springs. How many more? How many more? She made the statement her friends did not make it. That lets you know that there was more than her. But they're going to overlook that. Because right now they, they can't have that type of publicity in our city with football season, tourism. The World Cup is not good for the homeless. They're sweeping the homeless out. Mm -hmm. If you notice, drive around Kansas City. Yeah. Where they used to be. The camps are gone. Maybe. They just sent the city in, just took all their possessions, took everything, bulldozed down the camps, and they're gone. Winter's coming. Where are these people going to go? How are they going to survive? That's kind of how I feel like they treated this, these young ladies, these young men. It's more than young ladies being snatched. I want you to understand that. We have some young men that are missing. But we're, that's a whole different story. They're not going to talk about that at all. 
We have to do better. We have to do better.